Hi, Terry Shaneyfeld for UAB School of Medicine. Review articles are an efficient way to summarize multiple studies on a given topic. In this video, I'm going to describe the two types of review articles that exist, narrative and systematic reviews, and compare and contrast between them. So why do we need review articles? Well, what review articles do is summarize several studies into one publication, and is such an efficient way to keep up the literature on a given topic. Also, often when multiple studies are done on a given topic, there's often uh, disparate results. And by doing a review article, you can often um, pull those results together to give an overall estimate of effect. And then finally, often treatment effects are too small in individual studies. But by combining multiple studies together, we can increase the, t the statistical power to see a difference if one truly exists. Now, there are two types of review articles, narrative and systematic reviews. But one key thing to remember is that all reviews are retrospective observational studies. There's no new data created here. We're just looking at studies that have already been done and combining them together in a review. And as such, they're prone to bias and random error, just like every other observational study and every other retrospective type of study. Let's look at each of the individual re review types. First, we'll start with narrative reviews. So the way you know something is a narrative review is it has no method section. So narrative reviews don't have any explicit description of how they did the review. And they're often biased, unfortunately. And one of the reasons is that they're often done by experts in the field. And the literature search is often limited to the few articles that they need to support their point of view. So there's often a small number of the whole body of articles that have been published in a given area that are used in a narrative review. But the good thing about narrative reviews is they're very good for broad overviews of a disease or condition. They're much like a medical textbook chapter. You get a little information on etiology, on how it presents, general information on diagnosis and treatment. So you can get a very good broad overview or 30,000 foot view of a topic using a narrative review. Now this is an example of a narrative review published in the New England Journal of Medicine on the use of diuretics in patients with hypertension. And you can see what, and when you look at these couple of pages that I put here, is there's no method section. But it gives a nice overview of diuretics. Now a systematic review, on the other hand, attempts to collate all the evidence using very explicit pre-specified eligibility criteria for a study to get into the review. And importantly, it tries to answer a very specific research question in contrast to a narrative review, which gives that broad overview. And a systematic review has very explicit methodology that's used to locate the studies, critique them, and combine them. Now, a systematic review sometimes can include a meta-analysis. And all a meta-analysis is are statistical techniques that summarize the individual data from the studies into an overall estimate of effect. Now the key characteristics of a systematic review are that there's a very clearly stated set of objectives with very explicit and reproducible methodology. They do a very systematic search to identify all the information that's available, whether it's published or unpublished. They look for it all to try to put it into this review. They assess the validity of each of the included studies. So we need to know how good studies are that are included in the review. And then finally, they use a very systematic method to present and synthesize the information for the review. Now, this is an example of a systematic review on a similar topic to that uh, review I showed earlier that was a narrative review. And one of the things you can see up here is that they have very explicit and specific questions that they're going to try to answer with the review. And then as this review goes on, there is a method section which will outline how the authors went about finding information and studies to include in this systematic review, how they put it all together, etc. So very different from a narrative review. Answers a very specific question, whereas narrative reviews look at very broad overviews of a question. Hope this video has helped you differentiate systematic reviews from narrative reviews. Remember, if you have any questions, you can contact me through the course website or through the Contact Me section of my blog. Have a great day.